I'm Amy Pellegrino. I'm the sales and marketing manager at Salter Street Brewery. And my name is Tanner Hendrickson. I am the uh, brewmaster for the Salter Street Brewing Company. So I think the full story behind that was when John, our founder, decided to start the brewery. Uh, when he was getting his manufacturing license, it took almost a year to really kind of find the building. Um, he knew that he wanted to open up in the east end of Toronto, um, but it was just kind of a lot of hunting around trying to find the building that had the kind of the right feel for, for a tap room and a brewery. Yeah, so John really wanted to open a brewery in the east end. He'd been living in the beaches for over 25 years, um, had a kind of been using the finance industry for a really long time and sold a bit of his company. Really kind of wanted to invest back into the community, invent, invest back into kind of a space for people to come together and enjoy a beer and he wanted to find a building that really spoke to that. So it did take him a while to find a building that was the right size. And this one spoke perfect. It speaks so much to what he was going for, which is kind of sit back, enjoy a beer, let time stand still for a little bit. It's got some cottage vibes to it as well. Um, this place really used to be a horse barn. We think it used to have munition storage. The barn doors that opened the brewery are over 120 years old. So we really wanted to, the aesthetic of a brewery to speak to that as well. You see the train that goes by, you can hear it a little bit, which yeah. makes you feel like you're not in Toronto. Right, exactly. <laughs> so Magic Hour Golden Pale Ale started as a new brew Thursday program. So we launched New Brew Thursday, the pretty much the week we opened uh, the brewery, we really wanted to take advantage of our pilot system and take advantage of kind of making new beers consistently. And we just, we launched it every Thursday and it's a way for us to for Tanner to experiment with different styles, helps with our lineup, you know, ideation, things like that. But it also allows the tap room to kind of have some input on what our beers are going to look like. So when we started, we knew we want to start with one and be slow and steady, really kind of take our time, kind of fits with the aesthetic yeah. of the building, but also take the time with what beer selections we pick. So our Golden Pale Ale started as a new brew. It went, we have some data that we're able to collect and we just realized that people were liking it a lot. It sold out really quickly. I think it sold out within like 24 to 36 hours. Yep. And so we were like, oh, we think we have something. Let's make it again. Tanner was able to kind of go back and perfect the recipe. We did it three times as a new brew and each time it sold out so quickly. Wow. So we just decided to make it kind of, our second beer um, and it was also part of when we were launching our new cans and then our lime wit beer also started as a new brew thursday and we knew right away that people were loving it and so we made it our summer seasonal and same with our reunion harvest english ale so kind of the idea with what we're doing with the beer here is we're kind of doing slight plays on traditional styles of beer. So a Pilsner typically isn't poured copper at all. So that was kind of the first twist. With the Golden Pale Ale, uh, the idea is a lot of people think of, uh, when they think of Pale Ale, they think of an American style beer, very hoppy, very piney, lemony. Uh, our version, we were actually able to source some really cool new UK hops that kind of give you that same American feel, but it's all traditional English ingredients. So it was kind of a cool play on that. Uh, the Lime Wit, same type of idea. Wits are traditionally uh, orange peel and coriander. Decided to do a 180 with it and throw the lime in there as well. So the idea or the approach with the beer is they're familiar enough that if you've been drinking beer for a long time, you'll be familiar with the flavors. But if you're kind of new to it, it kind of gives you a bit of a twist. So it's it's reinventing it as, as a whole right. as well. So This definitely tastes awesome. Like Pilsner is, and I, I always go by Steam Whistle. It's the Pilsner yeah. mm -hmm. This, I'm sorry, Steam Whistle. <laughs> So, I mean, if you're, you live in Toronto, you know there's kind of east versus west a little bit. Um, there's, there's tons of amazing beer culture and breweries that are happening in the East End. Um, there's now 10 bricks and brick and mortar breweries um, kind of east of the DVP. And a lot of us, we're, real, we're friends. We see each other out and about all the time, um, similar restaurants and bars. And we all had kind of similar ideas. We noticed that people were doing self-guided tours or biking here um, and kind of doing it on their own or emailing us. Um, so we decided to kind of own the narrative. We wanted to kind of get together and figure out, okay, how can we promote the East End? 
promote what we're all doing, get people to kind of to come visit us, but also own the narrative when it comes to the tour, right? We want them to uh, kind of, we want to be able to own the stories we're telling and really inform people about what we're doing differently. And it's not, I mean, obviously we are all breweries all trying to sell beer and get people to drink our beer, but I think there's so much there to kind of promote all of us because we're all doing such different things. The breweries look so different. The beers taste so different. Yeah. So it's been really exciting working with everyone at the Toronto's Brew Collective. So um, our goal is just to kind of continue making people beer that people really enjoy um build our tap room right like if i if i could if everyone could stop by the tap room at least once that would be a great goal that's a great success for us um we're now our copper pilsner is available riverside pilsner is available in the lcbo um we're in over 150 restaurants and bars throughout the city a few select beer stores um i think retail is a really big play for us we think our beer really speaks to a craft beer consumer, but yeah. it's something a little bit more sessionable. So we, we know we have something something there that would fit in the retail market. So we're starting to grow a little bit outside of the GTA right now um, and seeing how the beer fares there and then kind of continue expansion outside of Toronto. But for us, really, we started in the East End and wanted to kind of get that, get everyone to yeah. know our brand and have tried our beer and then slowly grow from there. At the moment, I'm going to say just our harvest sale, the uh, the reunion. Yeah. yeah, it's just it was such a fun beer to, beer to make. Uh, we spent six months kind of really developing that, really delving into the history of the neighborhood. So it's actually kind of a recreation of a beer from the 1800s right. uh, from a brewery that was actually two blocks away. So we had a lot of fun kind of designing it, and you know, for this time of year, I know it's a little warm today, but it just kind of works really well. So yeah. Uh, for me, I'm really indecisive about everything. So I think for me, it changes every week. I really, it really is. I think reunion for me as well right now is our favorite, but um, the lime wit was the beer that I drank all summer. So I think it really, um, my indecision, but I think the harvest is a really exciting kind of move for us. We're really, really happy with it. 